The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. I think it's coming this way! It's absolutely coming this way! If only we had a better understanding of the asteroid population, we might be able to stop it before it impacts into our planet. Why are you just standing there? Help! You know, I think I might know somebody that can help us with this problem. You do? I do! I'll go get him, you keep typing! Wait! Put that can down! What if I was to tell you that there's a better way for you to express yourself without defacing public property? Are you a cop? No! But what if I was also to tell you that you can actually express yourself and do science? Let's get started. Amazing Hacks. Inspired Designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Matt, and I'm here with Jonathan, the president of the National Upcycle Computing Collective. Now, Jonathan, tell us what it is you do here. Well, the National Upcycle Computing Collective is a 501c3 and we try to bring in donations that will provide us with computational resources that we could use to support science. So for example, we use the platform of Berkeley's Open Infrastructure for Network Computing, also known as BOINC, and we support projects such as World Community Grid that does cancer research, AIDS research, protein folding, quite a lot that we can support as far as empowering science to do what it needs to do. That's fantastic. And I also see you've got a lot of like cool art sculptures here. Tell me a little bit about those too. Well, we do. Uh, if we can't use it for science, then we will try to use that computational resource or its frame or whatever comes with it uh, for education or for art. And that way we could build something that maybe the community can appreciate and utilize. That's fantastic. So I'm thinking if we take that like artistic endeavor and we can kind of combine it with our, our kind of hacker ethos we got going on here. I was thinking, why don't we make a, uh, a small device, maybe like a, a science throwy, so, something like it's got blinky LEDs on there, but it's powered by a small computer like a Raspberry Pi that may not be necessarily super powerful, but if we have enough of them distributed, we could do some actual science with. That would actually be great. And in fact, we have a command and control system that if we could find a way to integrate this in with our command and control system, we would love to help out. Okay, so I'm thinking just a small device, maybe solar powered, we throw it up somewhere here in town, and then we can uh, we can do some science, we can connect back here through a cellular modem. That's, I think that's gonna be the one. I'll tell you what, you know what? Let's get started. So an LED science blinky, a Raspberry Pi powered science blinky. Uh, first and foremost, we need some kind of a panel. We have a panel uh, that's gonna hold everything. And on the panel, we're going to have our Raspberry Pi that will run our Boink client there. Now, of course, sand gets hot when you try to make it think, so it's gonna need uh, heat sinks on the critical components there. And then I think up here in this area-ish will be our matrix. Neo, want to tell you about the matrix. So matrix, blinky lights, that's gonna be the actual the display, the output, and it's just gonna be a network of blinky lights that are powered by the GPIO on the Pi. So you know, forgive the crudity of this model, I hadn't have time to paint it or build it to scale. Pi powers the matrix based off of the science that it's doing. Now, if we're gonna have this thing off the grid, uh, it's going to, well, not off the grid, it's going to need to have some sort of cellular connection. So I'm thinking, let's use the Adafruit Phona to create a cellular connection. That'll have a, it'll be a serial connection to the Pi via the GPIO. Uh, and then that will connect to our cellular network with its little antenna. That's going to download the information from SETI at home, Asteroids at home, whatever programs we're putting on here, and download these big 
chunks of information, these big work units. And then the Pi is going to take that raw data and do its calculations and do its math, do its math, do its math. As it does that, it's going to uh, create different designs on the matrix based on the output of the work units. So at 10% we'll have one kind of design, at 20% we'll have another kind of design and so on and so forth. And then that will just be driven by the Pi and it'll know when we'll poll that and find out when it's uh, at a certain percentage. And then when that percentage changes, it will change the design on the matrix. And then of course, when the work unit is done, it will then upload that completed work unit, that completed processed data back to uh, the project, uh, whether that is SETI at home or Asteroids at home, working on World Community Grid, etc. So Pi, Fona, Matrix, Antenna. Uh, the only other real big piece that we're gonna need to look at is power. So yeah, we need power. Yes, I know that's the high voltage, but whatever. It's not high voltage, but it's five volts. We need five volts at two and a half, uh, 2.5 A. Five volts, two and a half amps powers the Pi, uh, as well as five volts powering the Fona, which actually the Fona will power from the USB. USB into Fona, five volts into Pi. And then that five volts, we'll have to get it from a battery because this thing is gonna be, and get a uh, sealed lead acid battery, that's gonna have enough capacity, uh, but that's gonna be 12 volts out, so we need some kind of converter. Uh, we'll do a conversion circuit here off the battery, and then the battery will be charged with our solar panel. Sun charges solar panel, charges SLA with the charge controller. The, the panels I've got already have charge controllers installed. Uh, so that is, that's a step we don't need to take uh, out to the five volt, ba uh, five volt regulator, five volts, two and a half amps into the Pi. Pi powers the Fona, Pi powers the matrix, and then we can do our science and communicate out with the grid. And I think that's going to do it. A um, couple of other considerations. I uh, want to put this up on a building, so we're going to have a big, a uh, couple of big beefy magnets on here somewhere. 40 pound magnets will hold this thing no problem. That is our basic idea of a design here and we will take that. We'll start to put pen to paper and let's get this thing started. I need to do some 2D design for the face of the uh, of the matrix, you know, the LED matrix and and uh, you know, the part where all the different pieces are going to go. So I have a square 200 by 200, and my LEDs are 0.7 millimeters. Yeah, so a five millimeter hole should do it. So I'm gonna have a matrix of 64 LEDs. So I need the five millimeter holes with five millimeters in between. They'll be nice and evenly spaced. That should be it. We'll send this over to Plasma's lab and get this thing cut, and we will be able to, <laughs> oh boy, it's gonna be a lot of soldering. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to uh, plop these into the matrix here. I'm gonna cock them a little bit, kind of a 45 degree angle there. And the reason I'm doing them on the 45s here is because we'll have one lead going this way and then one going across this way. It's a lot easier just to get them lined up correctly like that. Dun, 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 da, 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 da. That little dango doesn't wanna do anything, does it? Blimey. Kind of reminds me of the, the peg jumping game from the Cracker Barrel. Okay, so I've got the uh, the software back from Nuck. Uh, the guys uh, did me a solid and put together a couple of scripts. So we're gonna take a look at those real quick and just see how they work. And this is just some example code here. So what we've done is we've created a blank library. These first three lines here essentially just uh, imports the library and creates an object, a Python object, uh, around that library so that we can manipulate it and do the thing. So 
It, uh, it collects the tasks, puts them in an array, uh, prints those out, and then has some different information that we can look at. So this is the output of that Python script. So we have Boink actually running in the background and these block, this, this first block up here, this is really just uh, information about some specific tasks that are currently running. The second block just gives us lots of human readable information about uh, the first block in here. Of course, we can set that to whichever block we want to look at. And then uh, down here at the bottom, it's showing us just percentage done on each of these individual tasks. So I'm thinking if I can take some of this information and create something, some kind of interesting display based on the, uh, the numbers that I have available here, I think we'll be in good shape here. So we want this thing to be remote. And so in order to do that, we're gonna need a cellular data connection. So I've got this little Fona board from Adafruit and uh, it's essentially just a little cell phone on a board. And uh, it's, got, uh, it's got 2G uh, capabilities. And we just stick a SIM card in here and we'll be able to wire this up to the Pi. Uh, it uses a serial connection to connect to the Pi and uh, we'll be able to connect to the internet that way. Okay, so I've got, uh, got the Fona all wired into the appropriate ports or the appropriate uh, pins on the GPIO of the Pi. I've also got the uh, little uh, antenna uh, plugged in. So now we're ready to get this thing set up on the software side. I got the Raspberry Pi up and running. Uh, first thing I've got to do is install uh, the serial console script. Okay, uh, we've got a little blinking lights in. Okay, this is power, this is network. Um, shouldn't be anything going uh, just because I don't have a SIM card in there. But now what we can do is we can actually um, do our little test. Okay, so we've got our screen there. And if I type AT, aha, perfect. So now we know that it is, uh, that we're communicating, that we're talking. So now we can just uh, attach it to the cellular network and then we'll be able to get data through. Okay, so now we've got to set up the actual Fona software. So that is sudo. Okay, so we're in his root. Fancy. Let me take a look at it. Okay, example PPD configuration. Okay, I must change the T parameter value to your network's APN value. Okay, I must change uncomment the appropriate serial device for Raspberry Pi, uncomment that line. Okay, that looks right. So now we need to get this thing connected to the cellular data network. So in order to do that, first thing we gotta do is turn off our Wi-Fi. So we do that. We're in the boot file here. And what I've done is I've just added this, these last two lines here. Um, what it's doing, if you uncomment this DT overlay Pi 3 disable Wi-Fi line, uh, as I just did, uh, what that does now is disables the Wi-Fi on boot. So we don't have to worry about turning it on, turning it off uh, for our headless little unit here. So we save that, uh, yes, and save that. And then sudo reboot. Okay, so now we've rebooted the Pi. And next thing to do is to actually turn on our little device. So we do pon Fauna, and it's turned on we should see the blinking lights and uh, blinking a little bit faster now. Uh, as soon as that's ready there, we'll know that's connected to the network and we should be able to ping element14.com. Huzzah! We're connected to the outside world. Fantastic. 
So the Raspberry Pi B Plus needs five volts at two and a half amps max to run. What I've got is a, a nice big beefy 12 volt SLA battery, high capacity battery, and a solar panel with which to charge that. So I need to build a little charging device that will take energy from the sun, charge the battery, and power the Raspberry Pi with the excess. This panel actually comes with a charge controller circuit already inside, so I don't have to worry about building that at least. So I was thinking, how do you get five volts and the Pi needs like two, two and a half amps to run? How do you get five volts and two amps off of a 12 volt battery? A car charger, duh. So instead of building my own, you know, voltage converter, I just picked one up off the shelf. This is just an off the shelf voltage converter that uh, has dual outputs. It's got a one amp output and a two and a half amp output. I go, I go, there we go, Haha. So this is the internals here. We've got the positive coming in, um, you know, capacitor, inductor, and then, you know, a little chip on the bottom. It's uh, um, not that it really matters right now. Anyway, it's a, it's a charging circuit chip. That's all it is. And so a handful of surface mount parts, uh, another capacitor for, I'm sure for the um, noise just to clean up the noise and um, then out to here there's another uh, small ic here probably just to distribute the power correctly because so the one closer to the led is only one amp but this one is two and a half amps down here on the bottom that's the one we want to use so now through a little bit of jiggery pokery uh, i've got this thing working i managed to let the smoke out on a couple of these so um, yeah, we're just going to do it the old fashioned way. I've got, uh, the ground soldered onto the ground connector. And then of course the 12 volt in soldered onto the connector there. And we're just going to leave the parts stock as they are. And I suppose it is time to give it a shot. Uh, so we'll plug that right in there and then plug that in there. Here's our battery. Negative is already plugged in, and so we just connect the positive at our LED indicator there. We got power, and then we got power there, and we're booting! We're booting! So here it is. This is our finished LED science blinky. Awesome. How does it work? So you've got a, a matrix of multicolored LEDs here on the front, and they're going to flash based on the percentage of a work unit that's been completed for one of the projects in, in here. On the back, you see we've got power, we've got a Raspberry Pi, we have our cellular <laughs> connection, so we could really just stick this thing up anywhere. And, uh, and it would be uh, contributing to the scientific endeavors. Very good. So uh, I think you guys have it uh, have the software set up so we can do calculations for asteroids at home and for SETI at home. That's right. In fact, uh, that's important. SETI at home is where it all began. Uh, they were looking for a way to help people involve their computers when otherwise they'd be sitting around idle. And after they looked at the amount of people that had jumped on board 
and actually saw the statistics when they woke up one morning. They realized they had just done 10,000 years worth of math in one day. 10,000 years, that's ridiculous. And the great thing is that it's, it's an amazing number. And on top of that, search for extraterrestrial intelligence and finding signals that might indicate that there's life out there is a pretty big question that we would love to have answered. And then Asteroids at Home, another project you can do at home is helping us to understand the asteroid population so that we can better understand our solar system. That's amazing. So anybody could build something like this. It doesn't even have to be like this. They could just take an old computer and hook it up to the, to the Boink network and, and do science. Absolutely. That's great. Well, you know what? Let's get this guy doing some science. Let's, uh, let's go stick him up on a building and see what we get. I think it's a great idea. Let's do it. All right. So this was a very interesting project that sort of uh, combined the street art, blinky culture, the blinky hackery culture with the, the, the SETI, the boink, the scientific endeavors of looking for extraterrestrial intelligence and cures for cancer and mapping asteroids and seeing if they're on collision courses for Earth and poof, bringing them together in this world's combined kind of thing. And who knows, maybe our little street art might help find a cure for cancer. So. Have you ever worked with Boink before? Have you ever made Blinkies or Throwies or Sparklers or whatever you want to call them? Let us know in the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. My name is Matthew, and until next time, tally ho, y'all.